Hey, you guys, it's fun drive time again at the Institute. Help me pay my writers. The Institute is awesome. You don't need convincing by me. You just need the address. LibertarianInstitute.org slash donate. Check out all the great kickbacks, including our latest book, Israel, winner of the 2003 Iraq oil war by Gary Vogler. And we've got $10,000 in matching funds, so you can double your support without even trying. And William Van Wagenen's Syria book is almost done, too. It's so good. Just you wait. But it does take resources to edit and publish these books. So your help is greatly appreciated. I'm working on Provoked every day, I promise. LibertarianInstitute.org slash donate. And thanks, y'all. All right, y'all, welcome to the Scott Horton Show. I'm the director of the Libertarian Institute, editorial director of Antiwar.com, author of the book Fool's Aaron, Time to End the War in Afghanistan, and the brand new Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism. And I've recorded more than 5,500 interviews since 2003, almost all on foreign policy and all available for you at scotthorton.org. You can sign up for the podcast feed there. And the full interview archive is also available at youtube.com slash Scott Horton Show. Hey, guys, on the line, I've got Orf, Matt Orfala, actually. And um, you might know him from his incredible video montages, sometimes um, at least distributed in uh, cooperation with Taibbi and company over there at Racket News, um, known for such hits as the walls are closing in and Ukraine is definitely going to win this war. And I forget, but they're the best montages. Oh, the, the, um, the best one going now is, uh, recently is the, um, sharp as attack, sharp, 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 sharp as attack. Good old Biden. He's sharp as attack. Um, Man, that one just blew my mind. It was so much fun to see the way you did that and the way it just goes on and on and on like that. It's behold the power of the propaganda of the state and especially the Democratic Party now. Um, it's really something to see. And so, you know, for people not familiar, it's he spells it zero R F Orf. And you can find him on YouTube and you'll like it. I mean, it's fun because he's he's got the talent. He's like a DJ, you know, with the way he mixes together all the sound bites and everything and makes it a lot of fun to see. So uh, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Thanks so much, Scott. That's cool how you describe it as a DJ or because like I originally like I wanted to do that kind of thing and I just I couldn't do it because I have no musical talent. So so I. But luckily, video is working out. <laughs> yeah, you're you're quite able to sync up these kooks saying their ridiculous talking points in a way that is a lot of fun. You're the mix master, Mike, of Democrats telling lies on TV. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it, yeah. It's all it's all the same. Sampling, very similar. That's right. Um, I let me before we get into it. I want to say I did not. I can't take credit for the walls are closing in. It's such a good one. Oh, but I. But I have done Russia, blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, Russia hacked oh, the election. That was the unvaccinated. A great one. Wait, wait, go slower because I have to talk about how much I liked each one. The Nord Stream <laughs> one was hilarious, dude. See, I have all these are footnotes actually in my book. It's like, oh, you awesome. got to see the, the crazy propaganda here. Like, yeah, Russia blew up their own pipeline. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> one. And then what'd you say? Uh, the unvaccinated. Which is just a big compilation uh -huh. of mainstream media villainizing the unvaccinated. Uh huh. Yeah. Good. Uh, good. And Russia hacked the election, um, which was kind of the original "Stop the Steal," um, except it was you know totally endorsed by the mainstream media, um, where they said that you know Russia was responsible for the 2016 loss for the Democrats hit. 2016 lost to Trump. Right. Uh, all, now, obviously, you know, they're referencing like the DNC hack, but the way they frame it or, you know, alleged hack, I, it's crazy because crowd size source, cart, sorry, crowd strike says they can't even prove it was uh, hacked by Russia, the DNC emails. But um, anyway, <laughs> I, but, but uh, it, it's Russia hacked the election was the catchphrase to say that the election as a whole 
was not legitimate. That was another phrase they used over right. and over again. He's and, not a legitimate president. As they would say that that is misinformation, disinformation. They're meant to mislead and make people think that what they're really saying is they hacked into the vote totals, right? Yes. They lied about yes. who even, won. Hillary Clinton even suggested that. Um, so yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That, that's what they were suggesting. And they even convinced, according to YouGov poll, over about over 60% of Democrats polled said they believed that Russia had hacked voter tallies. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible, right? I mean, yeah, uh, it makes perfect sense though. Uh, you know, I learned this when I was a kid in high school. Um, and actually I'm only taking my history teacher's word for it. Cause I don't think she ever showed us the polls, but mm -hmm. I believe her. And the lesson was the same, even if the numbers are a bit off, but she said that like in 1991, they said, um, or maybe it was in the later 80s, she said, uh, they did the poll where they say, what are your greatest concerns about issues facing America? And then it's an open-ended thing. They don't give you multiple choice. They just let people answer however they want. So they'll have like the top 25 concerns or top 30 or something. And drugs was 13. And then they did just a year of propaganda. Tom Brokaw did his big special about the Crips and the Bloods. You know, feral young super predators with Tech Nine machine guns on the streets of LA and all of this stuff. And then later that year or early the next year, they did the same poll and drugs was number one on the list. Mm -hmm. And then they dropped the propaganda campaign after they got their Biden laws passed and whatever it was that they needed at the time. And then they did the poll again the next year after that. And it was back down to 13 again. And mm. I, I was so impressed by that, that like they yeah. can really jerk people's chain and just make them think whatever they want for a while it's anyway, your brain you know, on mainstream media. Yeah, <laughs> it's really incredible, man. Um, yeah. And, and they do it. So, um, and then wait, were there more on the list there that every, the, I love the hits here. I want to go back and watch them all. They're so much fun. What's some more that you did? Let's see. Um, um, well, I did a, a popular, um, Biden, you know, m brain freeze, uh, compilation oh, right. back in before he won, uh, the, in 2020. And, uh, I mean, it's just 20 minutes of him just forgetting the constitution. And, right. <laughs> I mean, right, right, right. Yeah. I remember that. And, and forgetting, yeah, even goes, forgetting oh. that he was running for president. Yeah. Right. Announcing, I, yeah. Vote for me. I'm running for Senate. Right. Repeatedly. It yeah. wasn't just one time, Scott. And like, <laughs> how does everyone not know this? If we had just like just a, 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 any honest media, like that would be all over it. He yeah. repeated the man who's leading in the, you know, in the polls, leading the election repeatedly forgets he's running for president. <laughs> and that was four years ago. Yes, yes, yeah. it's only gotten worse. Uh, yeah. Well, so <laughs> this is the segue right into what we're talking about here because here, four years later, I guess he got nothing but smarter and younger and better since then. Huh. Been eating his fish oil pills and so forth because uh, whoever these scum are, I'm not sure exactly, decided that this was misinformation and. They got away. You have this great report that you did uh, on Twitter, which I'm off of Twitter, but I asked the thread unroller to unroll it for me. So I read your whole thread here uh, of this dive that you did into these Democratic Party aligned. I don't want to overstate it. I don't know who they are. Who are these kooks? They, they who are, are kicking Democratic people Party off the operatives. Internet for saying that Biden's growing old. Yeah, they are Democratic Party operatives. So uh -huh. You have at the, the top. Is uh, Rob Flaherty? He was the digital director for the Biden 2020 campaign. Went on to be the digital director, digital strategist director for the Biden White House. Um, you know what? Cut me some slack here. Let me try to play this clip and see if I can do it without it screwing up. Okay. You know, one of the smartest things that I think the the party did itself. Uh, was over the last uh, couple of years, they actually invested in a team uh, that Tim runs, and, and you'll hear from Tim, um, to detect and, and track uh, misinformation and misinformation um, narratives in the sort of various corners of the internet, uh, and then actually go out and, and flag it to platforms um, as, as a violation of their policy. Uh, and so 
Um, that work, I mean, the, the, the stuff that, that they did was a critical asset. That piece of infrastructure, I think, was one of the more important decisions that um, was made in, in sort of the party space over the last um, couple of years. Um, um, so, yeah, I, boy, I mean, the smirk on his face when he's talking about tattletaling, a grown ass man with like some kind of stubble on his face. So about, yeah, and then we tattletailed on them and got them in trouble with the bosses there uh, to have them censor. Um, and that's just the one little clip. But I guess you had found what should have been secret, but they published what on YouTube? This uh, that, yeah, so Zoom that meeting? Zoom call, yeah, that webinar was hosted by this lobbying group called Hate Not Hope. And it was they did publish it on their Facebook page after Biden won the election it had very few views um and uh i mean i stumbled upon it because i was looking for you know when this guy refused to define misinformation under oath i was like well let's see what this guy's you know what he said about it before now there's a lot of stuff that was uh published in the committee on the weaponization of the federal government that you know including like emails from this guy, Rob Flaherty, um, clearly, you know, defining misinformation as what they say, you know, call anti-vax or basically just anything skeptical or critical of vaccines. Um, but but in that search, it led me to this this um, webinar, which was is titled "Combating Disinformation," uh, and the guests being uh, Democratic Party operatives, Rob Flaherty, and then you have uh, another Democratic Party operative working who leads the dnc's uh so-called counter disinformation program uh tim durgan and then the third op is becca rinkovich who was the rapid response director for the biden uh 2020 campaign and then went on to be deputy uh digital director under flattery flaherty uh, for the Biden White House. And now guess where she's at? She's at uh, Harvard University. She's running Harvard University's Institute to reboot the internet. Holy crap. <laughs> what a name, right? <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good at all, man. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> Especially when you see the clips of her in this webinar advocating uh, for censorship and referring to conversation about Biden's mental decline as disinformation uh -huh. incredible <laughs> yeah um well and especially when they had to admit it so bad that they had to overthrow him and <laughs> prevent him from running again uh and i don't know i mean i read a few different accounts of what went on there but i don't think they really I mean, the Post and the Times, they talked about how he wrote his speech with Donalyn and whatever. I guess that's believable, but it was weird the way that happened, man. You know, he didn't go on TV and announce it like LBJ or anything. He just put out this weird tweet. They said he yeah. had COVID, which is why we couldn't hear from him for days right during this transfer. Seems like at least there's space in there to speculate that they really presented him with this. Uh, you know, I don't know if you saw where Seymour Hersh and the New York Post both say that Hersh says it was Obama himself threatened him with the 25th Amendment. They're like, look, dude, we are mm. going to replace you, so don't make me do this the hard way, pal. Like, they played that level of hardball with him to get rid of him because he wouldn't believe them how crazy he was. They were telling him, Biden, you're too crazy to do this anymore. And he was like, what are you talking about? I haven't aged a bit since I was 45. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So funny because he, he was always talking about how Trump was the one that would never let go of power, but he he refused down to the right. line until apparently uh, either they threatened him as reported or he had a medical emergency, which is also which is being reported now. Right. Yeah. And by the way, I'm glad you brought that up. And this is I'm sorry because this is an interview question or anything, but just just annoys me as a chance to talk about it. Where he said the other day, I don't think that Trump will accept a loss. Well. Who gives a shit? He's not in power right now anyway. So what's he going to do? Bring his militia and sack D.C.? Or what is the threat there? That he'll cry about it and he'll keep crying about it if he loses? Because he won't be in any position to, I don't know, like 
refused to relinquish power or something like he was last time, although yeah. even then he wasn't really, was he? And he did go turn around and leave when he had to. Yeah. Um, but it just makes no sense whatsoever. You know, at least that threat would be plausible if he was already sitting in the chair, right? Mm -hmm. But as yeah. as the challenger, if he doesn't accept, then so what? <laughs> and Biden's telling me I'm supposed to be afraid of this. It just makes me hate the Democrats and want to see them fail worse and more. Yeah, I mean, Hillary Clinton never, you know, well, she did uh, do some concession speech. Uh, Obama made her at, uh, ah. at first there. Yeah, made her call Trump and concede to him. But then she went on to re just continue to spread the propaganda that the election was, quote, hacked. By Russia, and that Trump was a quote illegitimate president. Yeah, um, you know, I was I, I'm writing a book, and I have a whole RussiaGate section. I was just working on that part of it a little bit, and especially the narratives, right? About the way the I don't mean to be too sexist about it, but Jake Tapper counts too. The way all the ladies on cable TV news just went bananas with this thing. They believed in it so bad. You know what I mean? They wanted to. Yeah, I mean all of DC. I, I'm in DC, and yeah, it was it was nuts. Yeah, uh, trying to have like rational conversations and just it's yeah. really frustrating when they don't know they're lying. You know what I mean? Like, God, it was the same thing with Iraq. They're like, do I really have to debunk these weapons lies when it's not about the weapons anyway, dude? They're just jerking your chain, man. Yeah, you did a great job with uh, Bill Crystal, by the way. I'm oh, curious. Thanks. That like was when, fun. So when that was happening, though, yeah, like who in your life, like what, what kind of, like, uh, like when did you realize it? And like, I mean, I remember at the time I was in high school and like I had a little interaction like with my history teacher who didn't believe me. <laughs> he didn't believe my current event report that there were no, you know, that the weapons inspector said there were no WMDs. Mm -hmm. I was like, so did, was did you? I'm curious. Like, obviously, yeah, you went head to head with Bill Crystal, but before that, like, what was, like, was there? You know, were, who were the authority figures that you were just trying to shut you down or disagreeing with you? Well, um, I don't know if I've ever actually been like stifled, other than the Google, you know, Michael Weiss and the proper not thing. Uh, convincing mm -hmm. Google to downrank us all in 2017. I mean, that was really the thing that hit me and my guys. Dang. Yeah, I didn't realize. I mean, that was a long list. I forgot you were on that list. Jesus. Yeah, antiwar.com. And I guess the Libertarian Institute, because I have stuff, and, and my own site too, scotthorton.org. You know, I'll Google stuff on my own site that I know is there, and the site's been there for 20 years. And I know Google has harvested every bit of it or whatever. And there's stuff that I'm searching on the site that I know is there. And I know how to do site colon scotthorton.org, even slash stress because I'm looking at for something on my old blog and it still won't show me what I'm looking for. Um, I had to go and 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 Bing and DuckDuckGo and whatever would, would not pull up the stuff I need from antiwar.com, from the Institute, from my own site. I had to actually just go into the back end of my own site and oh. go to the posts and just find the damn thing that way. So bad. Yeah, it's so really bad. bad. How rigged the, the search engines Well, are. and antiwar.com especially, you know, it's been there for 25 years. We got like 100,000 pages of text or whatever, and it's not a bunch of search engine optimization BS trying to front. It's all content of really great stuff that we've been on top of all this time. And so it used to be back when Google before they leaned on them to do all this cheating. Antiwar.com would come up in your search results for all kinds of stuff all the time and in Google News as well. And then they just axed all that. And it was in the name of this misinformation that the truth that we were telling was misinformation when we were the ones debunking their lies the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Mad. Now, when did... now? They called it, I remember they called it Russian propaganda. That was the original thing. Did they also use the term misinformation then? Uh, oh, I forget. I'd have to go back. Okay. Um, I know eventually they did, you know, the full, the whole 
rebranding, basically, right? Yeah. Not Russian propaganda, but Yeah, there was fake news, you know, they're calling it for a while, which there was a time where that actually had a more specific definition that was an honest definition um, that was separate from just a lie in the New York Times, which was already just, you know, a Charlie Savageism or whatever you call it, you know? But fake news was like some Macedonian kid would make the Denver reporter and it would just have like a nice banner on it and some ads, some, you know, embedded Google ads. And then it would say Pope endorses Trump or, you know, Nike sneakers make you jump extra high or just whatever ridiculous thing yeah. for people to click on. And then that was the fake news. There used to be one called the EU times and they would have, like it was never admittedly a satire, but basically they were jerking your train, jerking your chain, and trying to see if they could get you to believe their fake news. So it wasn't funny like the Onion. They were trying to trick you, but that was funny. That would be if you fell for it. You know what I mean? And so it would always be like slightly plausible, but also a little bit over the line sounding headlines. You know what I mean? That you should know better. Um, yeah. So um, stuff like that. That was fake news, but they just changed it to just mean whatever I don't like anymore. You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. I mean, I found like this other, uh, some more, you know, Zoom calls with, uh, with these uh, Democratic Party ops. And there's this slide presentation of, you know, how the dis counter disinformation program works. Um, and literally every example, they give eight examples, eight bullet points, every single one is either accurate reporting or satire oh really uh, yeah. that's in the thread here no no that's coming up oh but, okay uh, but um yeah i mean it's just it's incredible but but just so i mean it's just it's gonna be th there are many examples right of them saying something is disinformation and it clearly being true like the hunter biden laptop that's that's another classic one but i think this these this slide will uh just be another solid uh example that kind of blows the whole counter disinformation narrative out of the water. Yeah. Well, you know, this thing, this is what just drives me crazy about the thing. It's just the stupidity, it, ugh, just the stupidity of it all. Like I get the dishonesty, but you know, the one last week where Elon Musk retweeted a guy that had this video where it's supposed to be Kamala Harris's voice. And she's going, I'm the biggest idiot in the world. And I work for the biggest loser president ever, blah, blah, blah. And the whole thing is obviously not real. It's not even trying to pretend to be real. It's not an attempt to fool you. It's just funny. It's an attempt to entertain you with like, this is what she would say if she was honest. That's all it is. And no one could possibly think or much less fall for. It's not meant to be fallen for. Right. Yeah. It was, you know, it was just Clearly a damned comic. joke. Yeah. Clearly a joke. Yeah. And they go, dude, I saw all of these headlines. Elon Musk retweets misinformation, disinformation, fake thing. Can you believe it? This guy abusing the power of the Twitter to tweet out this fake Kamala Harris video. Oh, my God. And I'm like, man, screw you. I don't even care. Like, on one hand, he does sometimes retweet things that are stupid and wrong. But on the other hand, also, I don't care. And I don't have time for this crap. But then later in the day... I'm taking a break from whatever, I guess, probably working on the book. And then I see more headlines about this. And so I start reading the news articles and none of the news articles, I mean, none of them link to his no. tweet. No, yeah, and so like, wrong. and I read like nine and I'm getting pissed. And then yeah. finally, one of them includes his quote, which is whatever, LOL, this is hilarious or whatever it was. That was the exact quote. So then, because yeah. see, I'm not wow. on Twitter. I can't just scroll the man's timeline, you know? So, because yeah. I had to quit to write the book or I'd never get it written. I totally understand. I have to quit social media every so often. So I Google the tweet. Account. I find the individual tweet itself that none of them would link to. And I click on it. And it's this ridiculous silliness. This joke that he obviously didn't mean that mm. obviously yeah. was just a parody. And yeah. it just drives me absolutely to frustration that they waste my time trying to yeah. jerk my chain. They might as well be shouting right in my face how stupid they think I am. And yeah. I'm just barely smart enough that that really bothers me, you know? Yeah, it's, it's infuriating. It really is.
uh i mean it's just that's just like basic journalism you know cite your sources like you're not supposed to take it seriously unless sources are cited yeah <laughs> like that's and, what they teach right and yeah. then they they just don't and then i do, do the work themselves. and they're wrong yeah. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. sucks bastards um okay so wait now this I, I I can't wait to see that the next video there that you do. Do you have a, a email list I need to get on? I think I subscribed to uh, you. Substack, YouTube, yeah. There. Just uh, oh the Substack there. Yeah. Or I think I'm I think report. I'm already subscribed to that actually. Okay, your great. Substack. Um, and then where am I? Here. Um, so wait a minute now. So this really worked this censorship because we're talking about we're not talking about this time around. We're, right. We're talking about this was old. You're saying this is from 2020. Mm -hmm. And then there was a part of this, I'm skipping around, but there was a part of this where he bragged about some of their real successes, um, where they had censored um, Facebook and Twitter posts and Facebook posts. Oh, did I say Facebook twice? I meant Google was, was one of those. Um, and well, Flaherty, in the thread, it just features clips of Flaherty just explaining the program. And classifying, you know, he, he brings up Biden's, the issue of me Biden's mental fitness as an example mm -hmm. of a, quote, misinformation narrative. <laughs> right. Uh, this and is like the I, part I was babbling towards here as I scrolled down was, quote, concern about Biden's mental acuity in particular went down by eight points over the course of our campaign. And I hate to give them credit for that, but there's no other explanation other than their censorship, right? Otherwise, he's getting older and dumber every day hmm. and everybody could see it. Well, they have a whole other... Uh, you know, in addition to pressuring social media companies to take down material, which is a crucial, you know, that's one of the four steps of their disinf counter disinformation program. That's also the, well, the, the counter messaging, right? And uh, so, so just examples of how manipulative that can be. Anytime somebody typed in the words Biden and senile, senile into a search bar, they'd be showing a video of Joe Biden, you know, sp speaking clearly, a short video, um, seemingly unedited, but it was edited. <laughs> um, and so, you know, with that, Google ads, uh, Facebook ads, and just, you know, what it is, it's traditional marketing, but it's using super advanced targeting and every and now if i don't know if you recall scott but in 2016 after the 2016 election there was this firm called cambridge analytica that was highly scrutinized for this kind of uh targeted advertising based on personality profiles so you know because of all the data that everybody shares online whether they know it or not you know Every search, every click, it accrues and it's building up profiles on all of us. And, you know, the more they know about you as a person, the more that they can create an ad that you and, and people who are like you are more susceptible to. And so in this clip with Becca Rinkovich uh, bragging about how they brought down uh, the Biden mental acuity issue by eight points, she attributes it to um, their targeted advertising campaigns. Now, I mean, I, there's no doubt that a huge part of what, you know, led so much of the voting population to, to wrongly believe that Biden was at the top of his game at a time where he was clearly in mentally in mental decline is a result of, you know, the mainstream media propagation, pro propaganda and uh, c censorship. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you can't discount the targeting campaigns. Right. Like it's, yeah. 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 All this. That's it's amazing. And so I love this quote from uh, journalist Sasha Eisenberg. Um, in his book, Lie Detectives, you quote, he says, Flattery and Reykjavik saw the opportunity to grab a voter at a moment of curiosity and then essentially keep badgering her as she traveled across the Internet. Can you explain a little bit more about what that means? Well, it's basically, you know, if you go um, to 
for well, let's say like that example uh, I shared uh, earlier, like based on what you type in, whether it's Biden plus senile or they also followed people who typed Kamala plus cop. <laughs> and yeah, so and so where you go on the Internet, you know, you're going to be followed with uh, videos and ads sponsored by the Democrat campaign. Oh, I see. In this see. case, it was the Biden Harris 2020 campaign. I see. So maybe um, she searches senile and they show her, you know, Google shows her YouTube of Biden looking smart or something. Exactly. But exactly, then yeah. she clicks off and says, I want to go watch a skate video now. And they still show her yes. some Biden ain't senile stuff. And then she goes somewhere else to look at something else. And they show her even more Biden ain't senile propaganda. To just yes. like really beat her over the head. That's great. I like that for the <laughs> and evil what's craziness of it all. Is I mean, it's kind of incredible that that the this Sasha Eisenberg journalist describes it in that way, which sounds awful, right? But and 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 it's important for people to keep in mind. Like this is the guy who's actually like his whole book is slanted, uh, in support of the Democrats. Uh, I mean, he literally mm -hmm. refers in his book and even at the end of this interview with Chris Hayes, he's he himself is referring to Biden's mental decline as disinformation. Yeah. Wow. And so and he's not he, even criticizing yeah. them here. He's saying like, exactly. this yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying is, yeah. is like if that's what their friends are saying about this process, like, yeah, like that's how bad it is. Right. Um, like he was being very hyperbolic by using the term badgering. That was a negative term that he was going to he went ahead and went with when he wasn't really criticizing them at all. He thought it was like a neat example of how it works. huh? Yes. Yeah. Man. And, uh, and similarly, uh, Kamala Harris was super critical of this. Uh, this targeting, this this highly advanced targeting based on social media data and online data oh, uh -huh. that, uh, until she changed it, her mind <laughs> oh my yeah no yeah like everything else right um uh, but she went so far as to compare it to domestic surveillance she said and this isn't going to be a, an exact quote it was pretty damn close she said um it's like somebody following you everywhere you go uh keeping track of everything you do and everyone you do it with and um, so I and said, like, you know, for normal people, they if this happened to normal people, they would call the cops. And so this is what our online experience is now with this targeted advertising. It's good. It's important to be aware of. And I mean, ad block can help a little bit, I suppose. <laughs> but um, wouldn't that be hilarious if it turned out that her whole stupidity was just a facade and she was actually a brilliant genius and this she <laughs> gets in there and is awesome and repeals a bunch of horrible laws? I don't know. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, that would be a ni nice, but uh, I'm not. I, don't know. I mean, I how many politicians is. could even say what you just quoted her as saying? You're like, right. That's you're pretty right. No, good. That's right. No, it's it, and I think it's fair to compare it to to surveillance. And I yeah, mean, that's what it is. That's it's a good one, man. Yeah. And I'm um, just joking around. This was the thing with Obama, yeah. the secret Obama. You just wait till he gets in there. Yeah. I know he says he wants to triple the Afghan war, but he's going to end it. You just wait. You know, people would just but, come yeah. up with anything. But of course, the the context was she was criticizing. This was during a Senate committee hearing featuring the Cambridge Analytical whistleblower, which reflected oh, right. fully on Trump. Other so side. that's why she would use this, you know. Exactly. Language. Yeah. <laughs> And then, meanwhile, like, I remember reading a bunch of things that said that that Cambridge Analytica thing was a bunch of smoke anyway. It didn't amount to anything special, really, you know? Well, like, mean, with this girl they're badgering, do they have any proof that this works, really? Oh, I guess the 8% thing, that's pretty good. Yeah, you can't but there's no question. Thing, yeah. This, this uh, I mean, unfortunately, Scott, advertising works. I mean, we all like to think yeah. that we're above it and we can see through it and we're not so easily manipulated. But it really works. And even just basic like repetition, you know, you hear something enough, you might start to believe it. And many people absolutely do do believe it. And and that's without these, you know, all this data where they can ta tailor a message for you personally that right. you personally are susceptible yeah. to. I know. Well, look, I got addicted to them YouTube shorts. 
I'll start scrolling through yeah. those when I'm supposed to be working. And I'm like, man, they got my ass, dude. They show me skateboarding and then they show like some boobs and then they show like these funny construction workers and then they show like whatever, dude. And I just keep watching. Can't help it's it. It's so bad. It's so bad, Scott. No, I have the same problem. And I even, I tried, uh, so there are these three dots that you can, out to the right of a video where you can click on and say, not interested, right? Oh, and you I can? Even, I, oh, you my can. God. Now, oh, but, yeah, Worf. But, oh, my on, God. I'm so in love with you, dude. Oh, I love you. Oh, my well, God. Wait. Dude, wait, I no. have been, they <laughs> they subject me to so much Dave yeah. Rubin. I want to blow oh. my f***ing brains out. You can you can make it not show you Dave Rubin. Well, no, oh. I didn't say that. They they say they give you an oh. option to, that supposedly does that. However, however, oh. Scott, however, so oh. I've tried that. I've tried that. No, you're I've killing told it, me. I told it I can't see any more basketball highlights. I just like <laughs> don't don't do it to me anymore. I have a weakness. Stop, and it still won't stop. Oh. Like so, I, so I wonder if like I you made by it worse. doing that. By doing that, I I basically admitted to them like I am hel hopeless, helpless against this, yeah. and they really and so they, to sh show me more of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I'm giving away my weakness to them. I wonder yeah. if that's well, the yeah, effect Dave, it has. I don't know. Dave Rubin ain't no weakness of mine, man. I just God dang <laughs> this guy. I'm like watching a video and then I realize he just stole somebody else's thing and then put it on his own feed and then. Uh has a little thing where he tells me what I just saw at the end. Yeah. Oh, someone should strangle that guy. Oh, God. And it's, and I don't ever want to hear what he has to say, because all it is is Benjamin Netanyahu can murder whoever he wants and whatever else he thinks. I don't care. Well, that is at a all. tried and true YouTube formula. Oh, what a bastard. It, it just is, unfortunately. Yeah, I could never do that, dude. I mean, if I actually, like, really have something to say about a thing, it's that's there's going to really be a point. But just sitting there and going, look, here's a clip of two other dudes talking, and then I talk <laughs> at the end of that. It's like, yeah, just and, to, that, like, and I'm one other dude oh, telling my. you that that was two dudes talking. <laughs> dude, seriously. Oh, <laughs> I'm your God. dude talking, and that's been... A dude talking about two other dudes talking. Yeah, dude. No, it's not good. If they ever find me hanging from the balcony, that was what did it. It wasn't the CIA. It was they yeah, forced yeah, him to watch yeah, another Ruben like, well, video. Hold on, Scott. You're giving them a green light. Yeah, that's how the CIA <laughs> did it. No, it was the CIA. They control Google, and they made him watch Dave Rubin until he murdered himself to death. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, What a horrible, horrible, horrible person that guy is. Just, just terrible. Um. So then, uh, oh, I like Has he this. blocked you? Has what happened? Has he blocked you? Oh, no, I wish he would. I, I'm oh. going to try ah. your trick there with the, I don't want to watch any more of these button and see if that helps. I'm definitely going to try. I didn't even realize you could do that. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I did. There's also like, don't recommend this channel. So that. Should, I really hope that does it for you. But if it doesn't make note, let me know. And if that's the case, then my hypothesis that it's really just a way for YouTube to for you to verify to them what your weaknesses are. Yeah, um, seriously. I mean, and it's not, yeah, like I say, I mean, if, if, well, I don't have that same experience. Like if it was a thing where like, look, man, stop showing me skateboarding because I can never stop looking at it. It's like maybe there's like an endless supply. That, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can say not this channel, not right. this, but there's just all unlimited. Yeah. You know? But yeah, but like I say, like this guy, I just don't want to see it. So that's, that's very different. specific. Hopefully yeah. it works. Yeah. Hopefully that I always works. try to scroll away fast. I don't know why they keep showing it to me because I scroll away as fast as I can. And that usually works. Like for a while, it thought, thought, you know what I mean? The goddamn algorithm decided that maybe I wanted to watch dudes on scooters because I've watched dudes on skateboards. And I'm like, <laughs> no, wrong. So I, I scrolled quickly off of those and it stopped showing them to me because I think it figured out that, no, I'm actually racist against stuff like that. I just like skateboarding. I hate scooters and rollerblades. I like bikers. They're OK. But um, so it kind of learned that it's going to piss me off if it keeps showing me scooters. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what it was. It was because one guy bomb dropped off of a real tall roof where I was like, damn, that's tall. Like, I'll even watch a scooter or do that. That was what <laughs> happened. And that set it off. But but then I convinced it, I think. I trained it to stop showing me scooter stunts. So I don't know, man. Hey, guys. 
I've had a lot of great webmasters over the years, but the team at expanddesigns.com have by far been the most competent and reliable. Harley Abbott and his team have made great sites for the show and the Institute, and they keep them running well, suggesting and making improvements all along. Make a deal with expanddesigns.com for your new business or news site. They will take care of you. Use the promo code SCOTT and save $500. That's expanddesigns.com. Man, I wish I was in school so I could drop out and sign up for Tom Woods' Liberty Classroom instead. Tom has done such a great job on putting together a classical curriculum for everyone from junior high schoolers on up through the postgraduate level. And it's all very reasonably priced. Just make sure you click through from the link in the right margin at scotthorton.org. Tom Woods' Liberty Classroom. Real history, real economics, real education. Well, I guess it was just a matter of time. I drank so much coffee I turned into some. Hey guys, check out the Scott Horton Show special blend at MundosArtisanCoffee.com. It's a blend of organically grown Ethiopian and Sumatran coffee beans. Two very different coffees combined to create a unique blend. Ethiopia is smooth and medium-bodied. Sumatra, rich, heavy-bodied coffee. And it's got caffeine. Lots of it. Which is good for if you have to drive drunk or get up in the morning. Click through from the link in the right-hand margin at scotthorton.org to save 10% on your order. It's the Scott Horton Show Blend from Mundo's Artisan Coffee. Hey, you guys, coming up this October 7th through the 11th, join Miguel Thorup, host of the Expat Money Podcast, the heroic Ron Paul, the great Tom Woods, Doug Casey, Mark Faber, Tom Luongo, myself, and many other great speakers for the online Expat Money Summit 2024. My presentation will be on the subject of my new book, Provoked, How Washington Started the New Cold War with Russia and the Catastrophe in Ukraine, which is not quite out yet, and learn how you can reclaim your freedom by moving abroad, legally reduce your tax bill, and protect your assets. More than 8,000 people attended last year, and it's free. My guys Kyle Anzalone and Dave DeCamp from the Institute and Antiwar.com will be joining a panel discussion as well. Just go to 2024.expatmoneysummit.com for all the info. That's 2024.expatmoneysummit.com. Well, so. if we're talking about what the, how the algorithm thinks, I, I just learned something pretty <laughs> chilling about the algorithm, which I think might not be a huge surprise, but it's... Um, Don't tell me Al Gore wrote it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. dude. It's okay. You had to do it. <laughs> you had to had to take that opportunity. Um, basically, so you're familiar with the YouTube's concept of borderline content, are you? Uh, why don't you elaborate there? Okay, so we all know. So they have all these social media companies. They have these uh, rules that they're constantly expanding and. These rules allow say that they can take down, you know, anything that violates these rules. But YouTube came up with this other term called borderline content, which doesn't violate rules. Uh, but they say they uh, restrict and suppress. So there's this whole category of content which they do not detail, other than. It's content that doesn't violate their their guidelines that supposedly will cause harm. And so they suppress it, systemically suppress it. Um, I just think that... So now this is something that uh, Susan Wojcicki has been talking about since the censorship really ramped up in YouTube uh, in 2008. Um, and I mean, she passed away recently, but anyway... Uh, that's not important. Um, horrible legacy. And what I read in the weaponization, you know, the Committee on Wep the Weaponization of Government's report on the censorship industrial complex was that they, and this is a, an email chain with Rob Flaherty, just to connect it to what we are talking about earlier. And he's complaining, he was trying to take down uh, Tucker Carlson saying he wanted to, uh, well, saying that Facebook wasn't censoring it enough. Uh, this was a video of Tucker Carlson correctly pointing out that the vaccine did not stop transmission as advertised. 
Uh, he was also pressuring to take down Tommy Laren, a Tommy Laren video because she had said she wouldn't take the vaccine. And uh, Facebook said, we can't take that down because it doesn't violate our policies. But then they assured them, and this is, this is not in my thread. It was in another thread I did uh, before it. And Facebook says, yeah, don't worry. We're still suppressing it. And we have uh, our algorithm ordered to limit borderline content. They say this counts as borderline content. And our, I'm oh, sorry, YouTube, it's YouTube's term. So in a similar exchange with YouTube, YouTube assured flattery that our, uh, we block borderline content down to at least what as at least as low as one percent of recommendations, and the goal is to have it as low as 05 percent of recommendations. Wow! So just just that's absolutely incredible. You know, there's an interview of um, uh, Darren B from Revolver News on the Greenwald Show. And BD quotes, maybe even plays the video. I'm trying to remember anything. He certainly quotes by name and, you know, specifically these executives at Google talking, uh, telling a story basically, right? They're like at some conference or some kind of thing and they're telling the anecdote about how they were criticized for promoting Ben Shapiro so much. And they responded that, no, you don't understand. We're doing that very deliberately. Because when anyone goes to any form of alternative, conservative, or right-wing point of view, we want to always direct them to Shapiro because he is safe. And, you know, what he says, he, he seems like he's a little bit on the outside, but he's not, that kind of thing. And so we very, and of course, the point being Israel first. That's what's safe about him. And so um, they, like, oh, that was their defense, was don't be mad at us for supporting this extremist. Yeah. In fact, you just think he's an extremist because he's a liberal. But in fact, he's a bitch as trick and he works for us. And it's, it's the same thing on uh, on YouTube. You know, they have Fox News and all the other mainstream, you know, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN. Those are so it to replace this um, suppression, you know, so they remove all the, quote, borderline content from recommendations. Well, they fill it with all the mainstream news companies. And I guess on Facebook and probably on YouTube as well, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they boost Shapiro in a similar way. Um, but that's why that's what helps them get so much more recommendations is because they're taking, it's taking up the space that the quote, you know, Scott Horton show borderline content would be taking up. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, for so sure. So it's just, it's just so crazy to, just to see, like, it, it, they literally have restricted you to us, you know, and everyone we know to a decimal point of recommendations. So they're not going to remove it, but they will restrict it to a decimal point of recommendations. And if that's the case, how do you ever, you know, make an impact, right? Yeah. If, if, if they've made sure that it's only a fraction of people will ever be shown this. Yeah. I mean, it's... This is the way they really cheated in 2020. Was And this was in the Twitter files where all of the biggest brand names of like the new right, the young right, say like Cernovich and Posobiec and Charlie Kirk and all of those guys got turned way, way down. And, and just like you were talking about, basically shadow banned, right? Completely adjourned, but not kicked off. So they're still pissing in the wind. They're still pasting like hey everybody here's my right wing thing i'm saying but nobody can hear it right all their likes all their shares all their everything yeah. goes way way down and nobody can see what they're doing and we're yeah. talking and about guys who like they're big shots man they're the leaders of the pro trump right in america in the media like it's you know what i mean it's not the same as just like squashing on what bare remains of the ku klux klan or something you know what i mean these are people who are perfectly legitimate voices who, by whatever hook or crook, have earned their audiences. It's 
completely crazy to think that they would be censored in that way in the lead up to an election like that. That's something you'd see in a third world country in some American supported dictatorship overseas. Yeah. And what makes it particularly nefarious is that, okay, if they take down your video, they take down my video, it's like, all right, like then it's, it's out. It's there for everyone to see. You can see the censorship and you can respond to it. You can try to, you know, uh, petition them yeah, at the very, you know, you can you do can something try else, to, open up a rumble to make channel some noise or something. About it. Yeah. Try, yeah. You can try to make some noise about it. Um, uh, where, whereas if they do this suppression where they don't recommend your channel and limit its reach with the algorithm, as they've said, they're doing explicitly in these emails. I mean, there's, you know, there's no way to verify it. It's, yeah. Well, and again, and this is so important. The misinformationists are the biggest liars. Biden's completely senile. Russiagate was a total hoax. Ukraine can't possibly win. And the vaccines are maybe beneficial if you're old and fat, but for everybody else, probably are a wash or even worse. Uh, and these kooks have been wrong the whole time about every bit of this stuff. And I love this is just such a great example I mean, you almost can't make this stuff up, man. Uh, they include in their uh, misinformation narratives, this guy Flattery says, conversation online about corruption. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, cor no. Everyone knows it's an absolute scientific iron law of the universe. There's no corruption in the Democratic Party. And if anybody ever said there was any, that is ipso facto a lie on the yeah. face of it. Corruption, please. He said, he said corruption was a, quote, misinformation narrative, along with uh, conversations about Biden's mental fitness and conversations about uh, the crime bill. Which, yeah. Mis quote, See, that's where I was going. Misinformation narrative. Yes. That's the All best. Right. The yeah. crime bill. Well, huh. so what's misinformation about Biden's record huh. on the crime bill? Are you saying it wasn't his crime bill? Because I'm old and I know it was his crime bill. <laughs> I remember from back then in my own brain. I mean, I expect he even bragged about it in yeah. some C-SPAN clip somewhere. He was also behind the, uh, the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996. And his I, staff uh, and, and his people had helped push the Patriot Act as well. Yep. It's the yep. worst of the worst in all of this stuff. The Patriot Act. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and ran to the right... With, in alliance with Strom Thurmond, ran to the right of Ronald Reagan throughout the 1980s, criticizing him for being soft on crime and drugs the whole time. That's who Biden has always been. Misinformation. You know, like what did anyone ever say about him in the crime bill? That wasn't true. He doesn't have any example of that. Just he doesn't like you talking about that. And that might help suppress the black vote if they know that this guy was Strom Thurmond's buddy, you know, yeah. and, and acted like it. And as I said in the thread, I mean, it, how are they, how the hell can they say these things are misinformation or misinformation narratives? Well, it's because effectively, I mean, in, in practice, it's very clear that misinformation to them is anything that is inconvenient to them. Anything that's inc that's inconvenient to the Biden campaign when they're working for Biden, anything that's inconvenient for Kamala Harris now that they're all working for the Kamala Harris campaign. Yeah. And the laptop thing, I remember the lady that they tried to put in charge as the commissar, the weird singing lady? Oh, um, uh, yeah. Um, she, she was a huge booster of the, the laptop hoax, which you'd have been a complete idiot to believe it if you even read the letter that they said. They said, we don't know this, and we're not claiming to know this. We're just saying it seems to us like it could be. Well, you, dude. Are you kidding me? But that was what the letter itself said. And then yeah. she wants to go and censor people, and, the, and Twitter and Facebook, the rest of them, they did censor people based on that, based on Clapper's got a hunch. Yeah. And their willingness to go along with this stuff. And and by the way, why didn't Clapper and them just lie and say, we got some secret information we can't tell you about? That's easy enough. They do that all the time, too, you know? But he yeah, admitted, he was like, look, I'm just making this up because I don't like Trump. Come on. The uh, That 
would be disinformation. Czar Nina Jenkowitz that you brought up. Yeah, she didn't just push that disinformation that the laptop was Russian disinformation, but she also pushed the disinformation that uh, about Alpha Bank and the Trump campaign. <laughs> me and Matt, that? me and Matt Taibbi were just joking about and okay. talking all about that hoax because okay. it's connected well, she, to their new yeah. revelations about that the same kooks who vouch for that from the Georgia Tech team also help vouch for the Russian hack of the uh, DNC server, which is also a lie. Yeah. And we're just finding that uh, out now, breaking news at racket.com. Wait, now, like, yeah, that is the biggest, uh, just the whole DNC hack. There's just so many questions there that, I mean, how CrowdStrike, they... The testimony they said under oath, their president, I believe it was Sean Henry, they, yeah. even they didn't have evidence that Russia hacked those those emails. And that didn't come out till years after the Mueller report came out. Yep. I mean, that is a huge red flag uh, <laughs> that that prob that may not belong to Russia. <laughs> I mean, my God. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and he anyway. testified that in December of 2017, and, and they didn't right. admit it. As you say, it was a full year after the Mueller report came out. Only in May of 2020 did they finally release that. I mean, that is wild. You know, do you remember that guy? Um, I mean, he's still there. Eric Wemple at the Washington Post. He's like the in-house media critic guy. And and after the Russiagate report, the Mueller report came out, he did a big kind of post-mortem on all that the media got wrong and all their Pulitzer Prizes and the Steele report. And he went real hard against the horrible Natasha Bertrand, who he said bootstrapped her entire career off of the Steele dossier and all this. But, and I had, I can't remember why, but I had emailed him before. Maybe I had even interviewed him before for some reason. I think I just emailed with him before for some reason before. I don't know. But so I took the opportunity to say like, Hey man, listen, I know you're really not supposed to go this far or whatever, but like, what about the DNC hack itself? You've touched on every single accusation. None of them have held up. But what about this one? There's no reason to believe it. And like, by the way, I'm not saying that it was this or this or this. I'm not saying Seth Rich and I'm not saying but Bill Binney. But you weren't Benny. allowed to question it. I'm just it. saying, yeah, but like, That's I'm just asking thing. you, yeah, start from scratch, bro, and ask, why should we believe this? And that was the one. I think out of virtually every major Russiagate theme, that was the one that Eric Wemple would not review. That, like, why did any of us believe? Because that was the core of it all. It's like, well, still, we know that the Russians did the hack and the leak. But no, we do not know that. You I mean, know? and that's according to freaking CrowdStrike. <laughs> yep. And Robert Mueller, in the Mueller report, he doesn't even try to prove it. And in his indictment, people go, oh, yeah, well, what about his indictment of the troll farm? His indictment doesn't even have a real narrative about how they did it. It certainly doesn't prove it. It sort of tells a story, but it doesn't prove it at all, you know? So, um, and then, yeah, as, as uh, Racket News is revealing this week, uh, come to find out the same guys who were, who had vouched for the Yada phone hoax and the um, just increased Russian web traffic near the Trump Tower, as well as the Alpha Bank hoax. Um, those were the same guys help vouch for CrowdStrike's uh, conclusion on the server, too. And they worked with the Clinton campaign. Mm. So, uh, and CrowdStrike, of course, had been hired by the Clinton campaign mm. uh, law firm Perkins Coy as well. So, whole thing is just a hoax as can be, man. There's no reason to believe in any single part of that story whatsoever. You know? Yeah. Um, even the yeah. Prigozhin troll farm, they weren't really trying to help Trump. It was just, they were just, I don't think they were trying to do anything. They're just making money. Yeah, I would really like to see what, you know, someone dig in a little bit more. I mean, or at least at, at the very least, I'd really like to see, uh, you know, somebody face trial for the murder of Seth Rich. Not saying it was him. I don't fucking yeah. know. But, I mean, uh, you should at least be able to question, like, all right. Who killed him? Like it's it's an unsolved murder. Right. You should be able to ask a question about an unsolved murder. Like like right. a simple question like, okay, who did it? That's all people were asking when they were, you know, 
smeared as, you know, wacko conspiracy theorists for asking the incredibly basic question, who killed the man? Because we don't know. So who killed him? Yeah. Yeah, and there was no real reason to connect him to the leak. But so what? Like, somebody said that? So what if somebody said that? Like, like you're saying, still an unsolved murder. They yeah, say that, you know, local black guys were robbing people for their cell phones in that neighborhood. All right, well, so show us some of them. Put them on trial then. <laughs> you know? If that's your explanation. Yeah. And I yeah, don't really exactly. think, I really don't think he had there's anything to do with everywhere. it, you know? Okay. I mean, there's but, cameras everywhere. All, all I'm saying is, like, regardless of what, I don't, like I said, I don't know, but nobody should be, should have been smeared and attacked for just asking that basic question. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing of it, right? Is there, it is um, uh, a damn near totalitarian COVID style lockdown on information because their lies are working less and less. So they just got to try to criminalize everybody who says otherwise or, you know, otherwise not outright criminalizes. Um, get rid of our dissent so they don't have to put up with it. I don't think it's really going to work, though, man. You know, you have things like this. Um, I don't know the different ones, but like essentially open source Twitters where, well, there's Twitter itself, which Musk ain't perfect, but he's a lot better than old Twitter was. Um, but also, I think there will come a time where you don't have to go to anywhere.com. You just have an app, but everybody's got the same app. Like Signal, but only like with your own page and something like Twitter or Facebook in that way. But it's just an app that we all literally are just peer-to-peer -peer connected without Zuckerberg or anybody else calling shots, you know? Yeah, it seems although doable. these, um, you know, there's an effort... Uh, to infiltrate the, these those companies, of course, the, like sure. the, the signals and the and WhatsApp. Um, in fact, a, an Atlantic Council um, Zoom call, some meeting that they they streamed with. Uh, I don't know if this what was the Stanford Internet Observatory or something like that. Yeah, some, um, I think that's all right. these all these pro censorship institutes. Anyway, the Atlantic Council guy is asked, what would you do if you had unlimited funds? And he said, I swear to God, he said he would uh, spot, basically put down the money to, to figure out how to spy on private WhatsApp, um, WhatsApp conversations. Yeah. Amazing. In, in, specifically, for whatever reason, he was interested in immigrants, spying on immigrants' WhatsApp conversations. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, um... Look, uh, I don't know. You know, I asked Greenwald, doesn't it suck that after all the Snowden stuff came out that, like, there are a couple court decisions and laws passed, but they didn't really rein in much? And he said, yeah, but then what happened was the whole world switched to HTTPS and got, you know, more and more signal in WhatsApp and, and encrypted type things, which are not perfect, of course. And as, if they've already pwned your phone, then it doesn't matter what program yeah. you have on it. But um, it's a huge improvement and that that's really the future, right, is just making their kind of spyware as obsolete as possible. I know, um, oh, what's his name? The, the um, antivirus guy who died? Um, kind of wacky. He had made antivirus? a... Antivirus? I don't know. I'm sorry, what did you say? I can't think of an, the antivirus. Oh, antivirus. McAf uh, McAfee. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. He had After made COVID. I was thinking like real viruses, like yeah, yeah. The the the, the McCa I mean, he sold the company eons ago or whatever. It was named after him, but he had invented a phone where it like had a switch that manually disconnected the camera lens and and function. It like broke the circuit literally inside the phone when you weren't using the camera. You could turn it off so that nobody could hijack your phone and turn it on without you knowing. Um, and the same thing like with the microphone and all that, because, you know, um, even if you take the battery out of your phone, they can still use it against you in some ways. But he's like breaking the microphone. There's like a switch to make it make the microphone itself literally not work so that you have so you could have a secure phone. I think just things like that are going to hopefully rise. As you say, I guess they'll all get infiltrated, too. So it's a never ending contest.
Sure. The battle continues. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, look, man, um, you do really great work. I, I uh, see how much traffic you're... Um, very memeable, uh, and very viral videos uh, get. And it's really great to know that the stuff's going out there because the stuff is just so outrageous. I mean, you get, trust me, you're getting the reaction you're going for <laughs> when you put these videos out, you know. Um, so uh, I'm really glad that you do it, man. And, and, and now, like, really digging in this is a little bit more and better, a little uh, bigger step toward uh, deeper journalism here that you're doing, exposing this flattery guy and all of this stuff. So uh, definitely on the right track and doing great stuff there, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. On the right track to join you at the proper knot list. <laughs> the next right. one, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll be seeing you at the gulag, man. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's Orf. It's Zero RF on Twitter and on YouTube, and it's Matt Orfala. That's how you say it. It's a silent E. Now you know. That's right. Thank you, Scott. The Scott Horton Show, Anti-War Radio, can be heard on KPFK 90.7 FM in L.A., APSradio.com, Antiwar.com, ScottHorton.org, and LibertarianInstitute.org.